Okay, so we have opened up the M&M &M lab, and that's what we're going to start talking about on the video today. Uh, and this M&M &M lab, all you're really going to do today is gather some data and put it in this chart. And uh, if you want to eat the M&Ms, you can. Just, just be careful, be cleanly, clean with them. Like, put them on a piece of paper, don't put them right on your desk. I do have hand sanitizer up here if you want to use some. Uh, and what a lot of people do is, okay, so here's basically what's going to happen. You're going to get this cup full of M&Ms uh, for your group. And then you're going to roll them out on the table, uh, again, on a piece of paper, hopefully, or maybe even two or three pieces of paper to, like, hold them all easily. Uh, and then you're going to uh, count how many M&Ms there are total and how many M's are up. Because on an M&M, there's one side that's got an M. Excuse me, girls. Look this way and stop talking. Um, so the M's that are up will go back in the cup. Okay, so when we roll them out, let's say that you end up getting 76 M&Ms total. Uh, and let's say that 35 of them have the M up. The M's that are up, don't eat those. They need to go back in the cup. Okay, so the M's that are up, go back in the cup. And then you're going to basically get data, which you're going to then try to... Could you stop talking right now? Thank you. Um, you're you're going to have plenty of chance to talk. Just let me get through this, and then you guys can talk all you want. Um, you're going to get this data here, and let's say that you had 100. You won't, but let's say you did. And it went down to like 51, and then it went down to like 20. That will be a lot off of what it should be, but that's the real world for you. And let's say that this ends up being 11, and then it's down to 6, and then it's down to 2, because you've got to unlucky again, or lucky, whatever you think of it. Uh, I don't need you to go all the way down uh, to 0, um, but what I need you to do is have at least 5 rolls, at least 5 rolls of the m and so to speak. All right, so then you've got your data, and that's like all the data you need right there. You don't have to figure out the K right now. You eventually will. But I want to talk about that part, too. See this equation? That's what you're going to use to figure out K. And I want to show you how that's different than last year, because I taught that stuff last year, and I know how that equation looks. Uh, I'm going to give you an example. 4,000 moose in Minnesota, and that moose population is shrinking. That's why I'm using minus. And let's say I say that. What is the moose population shrinking by? 7% per year drop, okay? And the 4,000 would be the starting amount. This is kind of like what you're going to do in your lab, except what's different on your lab? It didn't have this part. What did it have there? A 2. Well, how on earth is the number of M's going to, like, double every time? Because that's what 2 would do. Well, it's not going to double every time. If I did this, and I wanted to do the same thing with the moose, if I want to do 4,000 moose in Minnesota and it's going down by 7%, I can still put a 2 here. What? It's going down by 7 Yes, because you can change it with this K. All right. And T is like the X. T is time, and X is time in that previous example. Okay. And this is your starting number of moose, and the ending number of moose, well, obviously, if it's going down 7%, it's going to go down. Maybe you end up with 3,000 moose eventually. So this is the start number. This will be what it ends up at, the ending number. And then this is what you used to do last year. You'd say, oh, 7% decrease or 10% increase. And then this was always just a single variable. Now we got two variables up here. One of them's time. One of them is K. And we're going to make you explore how the big boys, big girls do the math. It's harder than last year. It's not that hard, but... Think for a moment, do you get that 2 to the K? If you do the K right, could turn into a decimal. 2 to the K, well, it depends on what K is, right? Could you make that into a 0.6? Sure. If you rate the right K, 2 will turn into a 0.6. Uh, how about K? Could I take the K and make this 2 into a negative number? No, you could not. Could you make 2 into 0 by having k be a certain number? No, you could not. That's excellent. And I'm glad you know that. And I think some of you are thinking about how this is an exponential and you can't make it go to 0. Remember me saying that before? That your exponentials can't go to 0. They can't even become negative. That's why we have this asymptote that this will never cross. 
Okay, so this 2 to the k, that's what you're exploring with this lab. I don't want to tell you too much, uh, but I can tell you that we can make it so that it'll be decay. Because I know you know the number of m's that are up is going to go down, right? You might start with 36 of them up, and then it'll go down to like 18 of them are up, and then it'll go down to like 9, and then 6, and then 2, and then all of them are gone. Okay, so you're going to uh, solve for this using logs, because we're in the Unicode logs. So obviously there must be a log component to this thing. Well, how would you have solved this with logs last year? Just, just this kind, because it's similar. Well, I'm going to give you numbers. Let's say we had 3,000 here and 4,000 here. And this is 1 minus 0.07 is actually 0 0.80, oh, no, 93. There we go. And to the x. How would you have used logs to solve this? Hint, there's something that has to happen first. You divide by that 4,000. And then... I'd kind of be stuck unless I knew that the thing you do when you get stuck is you do what? You rewrite. All right. Or you could put in logs on both sides. That's another option. But log base 0.93 is going to be a strange log to put in. But that's what you'd get if you did a rewrite. Okay. So will we do that today too? Yeah. You will. Because you only have one variable left and it'll be K. You'll know the T. What does T stand for again? Time. In the context of this rolling the, the um, M&Ms thing, do you get, you're not actually going to keep track of how much time it takes. It's going to be the T is more like the trial that you're on. And when T is zero, think about that, trial zero is like before you start. Can't you, once you roll the M&Ms, know how many total you had when you started? Sure, you do definitely do want that data. So don't like eat all of the M&Ms that aren't up and then go, well, how many did we have? <laughs> so you better make sure that you get the total at the beginning. Okay. All right, so there's a little overview of the lab. Now let's go to that file for the homework for today. I had said it was uh, in the middle, and you guys told me I think it's page 13. Is that right? Okay. So please find that. And... I have got it uh, started here with some help. Now, I honestly didn't intend to have this much help on here, but I could not figure out how to just erase it, uh, so I'm going to leave it on there. It's going to be some help for you. I'll talk you through it instead of last hour I wrote it on there. But um, Do you get that I am struggling to not cancel these logs because technically they don't cancel? But the other things are equal. 8 minus x squared is equal to 2 minus x. And then what do we do next? We solved it for 0, because that's what you do with all quadratics. So you always set them equal to 0. And then if you can factor it, you should. So then you get it factored, and then you'll get two answers. Now just be careful with those answers, because what if one of those answers actually, when you stick it back in there, makes the argument become negative? Watch out. Danger. Because sometimes you get two answers and only one of them actually works. Because one of them ends up giving you like a negative argument or a negative base. Can't let that happen. All right. So how about a number four, the first one that you guys actually are going to be doing by yourself. What's step one? Please don't say cancel the logs because technically that doesn't happen. But what could you say? Yes, sir. I think it's x squared, but 18 minus x squared is equal to what? Yep. And then, could you graph both sides and see where they cross? Yes, except this is specific in the directions to do it analytically, meaning we don't want you to just graph all of them. But that is such a powerful method that we have to say it in the directions. Don't just graph it. That's another way to say that. All right. So, if you set it equal to zero, sometimes these factor. What if they don't factor, though? Can you still solve it? Quadratic formula. Good. And you got a calculator, but just don't use it for graphing it and seeing if they cross. Okay, this one, I changed an ln to a log base e to help the other class. If you remember, that's one of the top tips I've given you about logs, is whenever there isn't a base, rewrite the problem so there is a base, because it'll become all about that base. Megan Trainer would be proud. 
All right. So then, if you get stuck, what's the advice been so far? Whenever you get stuck, think about doing a rewrite. And if it was a log, change it to not a log. And if it is not a log, think about making it into a log. So back and forth between logs. Okay. And this one doesn't have a base. Dang. Well, what do you do? Write it with the base. And once you've got a base there, if you get stuck, think about doing a rewrite. You're going to end up with a lot of quadratics this time. Don't be afraid of quadratics. They just need to be solved by either factoring. Setting them equal to zero, though, is key. All right. Or the quadratic formula. All right, on this next page, the pink. Oh, no, that's not pink. What is that color? Purple. That purple page. We're going to do all of them, and I gave a little bit of help on seven, no, 27 and 28. Because I wanted to remind people that when there's less thans or greater thans, that's going to usually require a number line at the end. Think about it. If I said some variable is bigger than 6, isn't there probably going to be a lot of answers that will make it bigger than 6? Yeah, it's a range of numbers. So whenever you're going to get a range of numbers, you're usually best off making a number line, trying to find the important spot, and then... Trying to test around it, see if it's like bigger or smaller. This one's a sandwich one where it's got two signs. So I tried to give the other class an example of how, what if it was a sandwich that was simpler, like 3 is less than x, which is less than 5, and I broke it into two parts. That's really saying x is bigger than 3, which can be solved separate from the other stuff, and it's also saying that x has to be less than 5 which can be solved separate from the other stuff. And then you just put it all together on one number line. All right. In a moment, you're going to be in a group, and you're going to be leaning on your group members, but don't be the weak member that's always trying to get the help from the other person. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, take a look at 33 and 34. Right away, it says LN, and Mr. Service advice is always change that to log base E. And then that'll... Remind you to like maybe do a rewrite, but then again, the number is going to be so ugly You'll be thinking how am I supposed to do this and then you look up in the directions and it says Use a calculator. All right, so then you can use a calculator to solve it whether that be to try to solve the quadratic or whether that be to just graph both sides see where they cross But whenever there's a less than or a greater than you want these on a number line and There'll be some important spot And it'll either work there or it won't and then you'll test around it Okay, so this is kind of the big picture. Uh, we have one more slide here where we're going to skip that one. And then on the last page, you can just skip the very last one. It's not like it's that hard. But this, once again, if you can factor it, you should. And a lot of people look at this and don't see that it can be factored. That can be factored. Whenever you're factoring, you make two sets of parentheses. And then the key is these two numbers have to multiply to negative 5. There's not too many things that do that. So you don't have that many choices. And then you got to figure out what goes here to make e to the 2x. And we already did one like this yesterday, so it shouldn't be like a huge mystery. All right. So there's your assignment. And now you have a whole bunch of time to work. Uh, and during that time, you're going to find a group of three four or five people of your choosing you are going to then sit with them and then once you have gotten done with four homework problems working together then you qualify to come forward send an emissary from the group don't have to all come forward uh, to come up and get the cup full of M&Ms that's waiting for you I'll just ask the emissary from the group to tell me how many people are in the group because on the really big groups I try to give you more M&Ms Yes. To get a calculator on the test. The test is so long from now. It's like the middle-ish to end of next week. I do not know that. But I know this. Whenever we ask you to do something and we say you can use a calculator in your homework, then we're going to let you use a calculator on that stuff on the test. Okay? So if you're being tested on something from the homework that you, where you could use a calculator, you'd be able to use a calculator. That'd be a pretty vicious, like, surprise. Oh, you used calculators all along, but for the tests, you can't. All right, so find a group of three, four, or five that you would like to work with. Go sit by them. Get four problems done, then send me an emissary.
That's all I have for the video for today. It was 8.4 day one. And doing the homework from day two.